Today we're going to look at calculating the horizontal and vertical derivatives of our magnetic data. We can see here I've got some Harris. We made it day 10, it's actually over. So um and darks in South Africa. And so the first thing to decide is, do you want to take the RTP or reduced pull? of the data first so that excuse me your final image will show your anomaly is directly over the body if you don't do the RTP then they'll be slightly shifted from inside you just need to remember that and they're not directly over the body something that might sway on this one is how much remnants do you have in your data? UM is your data remotely magnetized. So this is quite... These, sorry. These features are quite young features. And there is slight remnants. Um, but it's not that significant. And so in this case, I probably wasting the RTP. You can decide for your data, just keep it in mind. And so how I would do that is, I first need to load the menu. I've got GX load menu and I go down to mag map. Go up to mag map. Mag map and select the first one, one step full train. And I'm going to put in the original grid file. So I've got to scroll down. Hit find this magnetic grid file. I'm going to give the output name. I'm going to save it in a place where I'm going to be able to find it again. So I'm also going to choose a name. So I'm going to choose the original name and add on to the end RTP. And I click Save. And then load of control file. And hopefully you should have won that. In your full day. If not, email me and I can always send you one and then click here on filter and really click on the first one and go down to reduce to magnetic pole you can see you're gonna have to have the inclination and the declination of your data set and maybe you don't know that how do we go about finding that and it cancel and cancel and so. One of the easiest ways I find to determine this is to go over here, create a new database. You can call it whatever you want. Call it something useful. I'm not, I'm gonna just call it test click OK. And I want to find out what are some of my coordinates in my on my grid here and how I do that. It's got grid and image utilities grid profile. So I'm literally going to extract a profile from here. From my grid and choose some data. It's not so important which date is it you choose. You don't have to have three months. Just loaded through automatically. Just make sure in the grid one, you choose one of your grids that you're currently using. Give the new line name. 
You can just call it zero. And how often do you want a sample? Not so important, I just put 1000. And make sure it is digitized for math. And so, what that's telling us is that you click on the map. Click again at the end of the profile right. Click Done. It's a here to extract it X. Y coordinates because my grid was originally in X, Y. And now. Excuse me, I want to convert this. To let long. And, and so I'm going to go New Project Coordinate System. Under Coordinate. Going to choose my X and Y. I'm going to determine what coordinate system they're in. I'm going to click a. Type in Longitude and Attitude click Next. I'm going to click on Geographic. And you can see it's giving me my that long. And they also I'm going to need is. I'm going to need elevation, so. I've got a great father. That's got all my elevations in it. So I'm literally going to use these X and Y. That used to sample this grid. And to extract the zip venues at these locations. And so I'm going to go Grid and Image Utilities. Sample a grid. So I'm using my X and 1 and I'm going to create a. Column that says Innovation. Excuse me, I'm going to scroll to. Navigate to where I've saved this grid. You can see it's Topa. And I'm going to click OK. And you can see it's loaded innovations. If you don't have an innovation group, to be able to do this, check out my video about using the seeker feature in yourself. That helps you extract ISO TM data to get innovations. And so the next step now is to go GX. Load the menu and scroll down to IGRF. And now it's loaded this IGRF menu. And what we're going to do is calculate the IGRF of the channel. And so what you need to do here is you can keep IGRF. Keep auto survey date. What date was the survey flow? And her mind was when in 2001. I don't know the exact month, so I'm going to just put dash 0101. One of my longer to channels, I slate them. You got to have them already, that's my debation channel. You got to have it already as well. And now you're going to give headers. So these channels don't exist yet. You're just going to give headings to these channels. So total field inclination. Declination, so these are bad news that are calculated. Um, IGEO studies that are calculated and these. This is the inclination. The declination that we need to take to plug in. Back into the reduced pole. I click OK. It doesn't automatically know them. Sorry, you go click on the column heading. Go list, then click TF, do it again, list inclination. Click on. Detonation so you can see inclination and detonation. Um, are all the same, it's just cause. 
Um, it's not a very long line. So it doesn't change along this line. It's now that you got the inclination. Declination values. You can go back to MagMap once to filter. Thankfully, it saved all the values you put in earlier. Click on Filter. Scroll down to Reduce to Magnetic Pole. Put in the excellent inclination minus 6, 6. And declaration minus 20 to 0.4. And for two correction, you can read up about that. I'm going to leave a blanket so it uses the default. Click OK. Click OK again. Overwrite the spales. I've obviously done this before. And this is the RTP grid. Let's put them next to each other so you can compare them. The main thing is that it shifts your anomaly to be over the body. And as you can see, it has changed them. These bend is done here, you got a larger blue. So yeah, you just got to be careful. Sorry I put these the wrong way around. I meant to do it that way around. So I've got my original grid on the left and the RT. P on the right. So yeah, you can see instead of this strong blue, it's now shifted to be a stronger anomaly. Supposedly over the body that is causing this anomaly. And again here you got this positive over the um. Body and said this positive negative. Okay, so now. I'm going to use this. RTP belly to calculate my derivatives. This is actually the quicker part. So now we're going to go to magma one step full trim. I'm going to choose my RTP grid. And then I'm going to change the output grid. I like to say what I've done to this grid as I've been going along. So I keep the fact that I've RT. P it, and I add on here vertical derivative. Filter I'm going to scroll. Derivative over here. This can be different in different versions of DEER. Such so. You might have to scroll down to vertical derivative. But in this version, I click on derivative. And here I can choose to have horizontal vertical. I'm going to click on save. And it's my first virtual derivative. Click OK. Click OK and see I've done this before as well. OK. So this is my first vertical derivative and put our T. P on the left and vertical derivative on the right. You can see a lot of north, south features, and that's most likely in flat lines. The date hasn't been leveled correctly, but you can see a lot more features coming out. There's this dark coming down the side here. This dark coming northwest to southeast. So that's the vertical derivative. Let's try the horizontal derivative. So again, change your output file. I just put HD and BD for horizontal vertical. 
And now I'm going to choose my extorvative. I'm first order click OK. I'm actually going to put your X. X HD so we can try what the Y HD looks like. Okay, so this is X HD. And so you can see it's picking up a lot more. Um, of the new, of the blue features are quite a lot more prominent. Let's put our vertical derivative on the left and our horizontal derivative on the right. So yeah, it might help you make different features. Let's try now doing your YHD to change your output file. YHDKK. Okay, so that's coming more in this direction here. You're not noticing your front line so much anymore. Let's put our XHT on the left and the Y. HT on the right. And so every little bit of information helps. If you may pay. And so, you seeing a lot more of a north, west southeastly trained here because of um. This change in the direction of the horizontal derivative. So yeah, that's how you would calculate your horizontal on your vertical derivatives. I'm using your reduce to pole image. If you don't, you calculate your reduce to pole image. Just remember that your anomaly is your positive strong positive. A number is not going to be directly over your body if you're not at the poles. Good luck.